This is a common starling. Its native range is mostly Eurasia and northern Africa, but here it is feeding on a grassy lawn of eastern Canada. How did it get here? Let's take a closer look at the common starling. It is a passeriform bird in the family Sternidae, and its Latin name is Sternus vulgaris. It has a wide native range in Europe, parts of Asia, and northern Africa. So, what is it doing in all these other places? It comes down to one word. Introductions. Humans have a long history of taking species from their native range and putting them into places that they don't belong, often with disastrous consequences. In North America, humans attempted to introduce the common starling many times. But in 1890 and 1891, an attempt of releasing 50 pairs was successful. Of those 50 pairs, 16 pairs survived and became the hundreds of millions occupying North America today. Starlings are well adapted to land converted for human use, such as this lawn. They are adept at using a variety of food sources such as fruit orchards, where they can cause millions of dollars of damage to fruit crops. Relatively little is known about how starlings affect native populations of birds and other animals. One limited study in 2003 did not find much evidence that starlings affected native birds in North America. We simply do not know enough about starlings in this regard. And, as with any invasive species, interactions of starlings with native animals may change over time and may also be quite different in different parts of the world. The common starling's diet consists of fruits, grains, but also insects and even lizards. In areas that are too cold in the winter, they migrate, whereas starlings in warmer areas are permanent residents year-round. They lay four to six eggs, and these eggs take about 12 days to hatch. Despite their infamous reputation, starlings are actually quite beautiful birds. Thank you for joining me, and I hope to see you again next time.